Hey everybody, Brian D'Amico here from VectorVest, and tonight we're gonna look at how to overcome the five most common investing mistakes. We all make mistakes, but if we don't fix them, we're just gonna be doomed to repeat them. Why is this so important? I mean, why do we have to overcome these mistakes? Well, investing mistakes, they could just be totally demoralizing. If you keep buying stocks and they drop after you buy them, or you just pour more money into losing positions, Maybe you just don't sell stocks when you're supposed to sell them and you watch them turn into losers. If you just keep doing that, it just gets very demoralizing. And if you keep doing that over and over again, of course, it's going to be financially devastating. So today we're going to work on fixing that. What we're going to do first is we're going to identify the mistakes. We're going to look at all five mistakes, go through them one by one. And to do that, we're going to use real life examples. Every week we have a coaching webinar with our clients. And tonight we're going to look at several examples that were brought up last week at that coaching session. And we're going to look at nine specific examples and identify the mistakes that are getting made. While we go through those mistakes, we're also going to see how we can be fixing them. But once we go through them all, I'm going to wrap it all up and I'm going to show you the process that we teach you to fix those mistakes. And of course, once we're all done, I don't want to just leave you with, with that. I want to give you action items so that you know exactly what you should be doing right now. So let's get right to it. Let's look at the first mistake. And mistake number one is that you buy stocks that are in overall downtrends. And by this I mean not just over the past day. I'm talking about over the past month, the past quarter, the past year. And these are stocks that are just going down. When you buy stocks in overall downtrends, I, I look at it like a roller coaster. You know, when you get on a roller coaster, you know how it goes all the way up to the top? And then there's this ride down. What does the roller coaster not do? Well, the roller coaster doesn't get back up to the top. It has these little waves down and up, down and up, but it's hitting lower and lower highs. And a lot of times that's going to happen with your stocks. When you get in on stocks that are dropping, they might have little up waves, but a lot of times they're just going to keep hitting lower and lower highs. So let's look at a few examples that were brought to us at this most recent coaching session. All right, first off, we're looking at Dollar General. And our most recent coaching session was November 12th. It's every Thursday we meet. So here we're looking at Dollar General. Overall, its relative value and relative safety are pretty good. Its earnings is actually climbing. And the price is actually under its value. So fundamentally, it looked fine. But look at this thing. It was just dropping. So we were asked, what do you think about Dollar General? I'm thinking about buying it. Well, we avoid stocks like this. Now, if we go forward a day, and this thing dropped again, it ended up dropping about 5%. Now, even though in the next couple of days the market rebounded, think about what you're going through mentally. You bought a stock and it just dropped immediately after you bought it. And you're spending all of this time trying to make back those losses. And this doesn't happen every time. This could actually go up, hit resistance, and come back down just like it's done here and here. Let's look at two other examples. Here's Rackspace. Another person asked us, hey, what do you think about Rackspace? I'm thinking about buying it. Well, sometimes you get enticed because of these little upswings. But what ends up happening a lot of times is these things just drop. And then they start to hit lower and lower highs, just like the roller coaster. And if we look at one more, here we're looking at U.S. Steel. Same thing. Somebody was thinking about buying U.S. Steel. And as we move forward day by day, even though the market's been in an upswing itself, this stock continued to drop. And that's what you find a lot of times. Remember this phrase, what you see in the past is most likely what you're going to see in the future. So if this thing's in a downtrend, buying stocks that are in a downtrend typically leads to those positions continuing to fall on you. So let's avoid that mistake. The second mistake that we see people making is not just that they're buying stocks that are going down, but there are times when there are actually good stocks, really good fundamentally sound stocks that have been in an uptrend, but they're going down right now. They just started a downtrend. This is something that's been taught by the gurus out there over and over again that you should buy on the dips. Don't buy while the stock's rising. Wait for it to pull back. You can get it in, get in cheaper. So let's go look at two examples from that coaching session. All right, the first one here is NTES. This is a stock that was at the top of our stock viewer many times this year. Had a, has, is now having this nice strong rebound. It's got high RV, high RS. Overall, very fundamentally sound stock. So on November 12th, somebody had asked, should I buy this? Well, what do we see? Well, yeah, it did break above an area of resistance. But what do you see is happening that day? The stock 
while it was having an up day, it was pulling back throughout the day and actually moving lower and lower during the day. And you want to avoid that because that's a bad sign. You don't want to buy stocks that are dropping. So what we had said was you could do two things. One, wait for it to show that it's going into an uptrend. Either wait for it to open the next day or the day after above where it closes today. Or if you want to be even safer, you can wait for it. Let me put another horizontal line here to go above that day's high. Well, if I go forward a day, oh man, it continued to drop. And then the next day, it dropped even further. I believe it ended up being about an 8% drop from when we were talking about it that day. So instead of buying it here, well, it did rebound the next few days, came back up, closed above the prior day's high, so it could have been an entry there. Or you see these next two days it popped up above, and especially today, we'll talk about this next tip in just a minute. We have a market signal that it's okay to be buying today. While this one did turn back around and move back up, let me show you what happens a lot of times when you start to buy these stocks and trying to get in on the dip. All right, here's B-Square. Again, somebody had said, hey, is now a time to buy B-Square? And of course, they're trying to do the same thing that's been always taught, buying on the dip, buying on a pullback, trying to get in a little bit cheaper than it was before. It's a high RV stock, rising earnings, price is actually below its value. You can see all that here below the value, rising earnings. Stock is in a, was in a nice uptrend, but it was pulling back. So our advice was don't be buying this stock. We always go back to Dr. Delito's quote when he was asked when he would buy a stock that was falling like this. And he would just respond, he'd say, when it stops going down. And someone said, well, how do you know when it stops going down? He said, when it starts to go back up. Well, we saw that in the previous example with NTES. Here with B-square, if we move forward each day, look at that big drop the next day. Then it's just lingering lower. So you don't want to try and catch that falling knife. No matter what the fundamentals look like, no matter what kind of uptrend it was in, if it's pulling back, avoid the mistake of trying to get in on the dip and buy it when it's dropping. You don't want to do that. All right, let's take a look at mistake number three. Mistake number three is that you just buy more of a bad trade. We had a couple of people in our coaching session ask, hey, I have an existing position and I'm thinking about doubling up on it. So let's take a look at those positions. All right, the first one here is Cisco. So we were asked, hey, should I double up on my position on Cisco when the market starts to turn around? Well, we've learned from previous mistakes that this thing is dropping. Of course, we don't wanna buy any more of it now. But the point we tried to get across in the coaching session is, look what this thing has done over the past year. Even though earnings has been rising, the stock price has done absolutely nothing. You've gotta be like a lawyer or a judge or something where you're presenting a case. And you've gotta be able to make a strong case that putting more money into this stock is a better idea than buying shares of a good stock that is actually doing what you want, that's rising in price and in a nice uptrend. And if you can't make a case like that, then you shouldn't put any more money into this. And if we move forward, if we just go forward a day, I mean, look at this thing, it dropped from 28 all the way down to 26 the very next day. And yeah, the thing over the next few days has started to come back, but it hasn't even gotten back to where it was before. And how much confidence do you have in this stock or stocks that look like this that this thing is going to start climbing and hitting higher and higher highs. Remember, what you see in the past is most likely what's going to happen in the future. And if this thing goes up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down like this, most likely in the future it's going to do the same thing. Let's look at one more where somebody asked if they should double up on it. All right, here we're looking at ZIOP. Probably don't know this one as much as you knew Cisco. But again, the question was, hey, I own ZIOP. I'm thinking about doubling up on it. Well, again, this one, look at it. It is falling at the current time. It's hitting areas of resistance. What kind of case can you make that putting more money into this trade is a better idea than getting money into another stock? If anything, we would say, wait until it starts to break above a new high and show that it's able to break out of that. And if we just go forward a couple of days, look at this thing, it just continued to fall and did nothing. So the mistake is don't add to a trade that's going nowhere. Instead, think about using your money more wisely and putting into a better trade. All right, mistake number four. Mistake number four is that you just don't have an exit plan. Now, what are you gonna do after you enter the trade? 
Well, we teach that you've got to decide that ahead of time in both directions. You've got to know what's going to happen or what you're going to do if the stock goes down and what you're going to do if the stock goes up. In last week's coaching session, there was one specific example that I want to talk about. All right, here we're looking at OBCI. Now, hopefully you're looking at this saying, well, why did he buy it in the first place? I had no control over the purchase of the stock. At this point, it was too late. He had already purchased it. So now he said, help me set my stops. All right, first off, you got to go into the trade with a clear exit strategy. Now, he happened to have purchased the stock down here near the low. So let's just say he bought it. He said he actually bought it at the low, which is great for him, right? So now he's sitting there with a position that had gone from $2.50 all the way up to $3.13. So roughly about a 25% increase in about a month and a half worth of time. And he came to us saying, hey, what should I do? Well, we helped him set his exit strategy. In fact, let me just show you what we taught him. We said, all right, this stock, you're looking at a 25% gain. Decide what you're happy with. Follow Dr. Delito's guideline. Make sure you don't give back more than half. And we drew a couple of lines. We said, hey, right now it's at an area of resistance. It's actually poking its head up above that. So right in this area, there's an area of resistance. There's most likely going to be a time where people decide to sell it, just like they did over here. So we said, hey, right around there would be a good exit. Or you could decide to follow Dr. Delito's guideline and make sure you don't give back more than half. It's all based on the profit target. So you got to know what you're going to be happy with on the upside and when you should exit to the downside. Now, luckily, he came to that session. We helped him set the stop because going forward a day, this thing just tanked. But you see the solid red candle. It opened up here, and it slowly moved down throughout the day. So he would have been able to get out and protect those profits. And then you can see what happened going forward. You don't want to give back all of your gains. So you want to have an exit strategy before you enter the trade. How many times have you let a, a winning trade like this turn around and then you end up selling it at a loss or maybe you still hold on to it? So avoid that mistake. Go into a trade with an exit. All right, let's look at the last mistake, mistake number five. Mistake number five is the biggest one and that's you ignore the market's direction. You just go out there looking for stocks to buy and you don't pay any attention to what's going on in the market. If you noticed all the examples we looked at happened on November 12th. Here in the US market, on that day, we were having all red lights across the board. We were saying, don't buy stocks. And you could see just how many people were coming to us saying, I'm thinking about buying this stock. So everyone, we prefaced it with, no matter what we tell you right now, you're not buying anything today because the market is going down. You know, one specific example was Facebook. Let's take a quick look. Okay, here was Facebook on November 12th. The gentleman said, should I buy more of this? I bought, I bought it originally at $108.70. I'm thinking about buying more of it. Well, just like all the previous examples, the first thing out of our mouth was, no, the market's going down right now. Instead of thinking of buying, you've got to pay attention to the market's direction and not think about buying. Instead, think about when you're going to exit your positions. So remember, the mistake is, that you ignore the market direction. So now you want to pay attention to the market's direction. Instead of ignoring it, you're going to say, all right, I know the market's going down. I own Facebook. I'm not going to think about buying more of it. I'm going to think about when I should exit this thing. And just like in the previous examples, if I move forward, I mean, the thing had a big down day. Now, when it falls like that, what happens? Sometimes you become emotional and sometimes you just, you sell it right away because you just bought it and the thing drops. And even though it rebounds the next few days, and it hit a low of $100, that was a, almost a 10% drop after the purchase price. And even though it rebounds like this, a lot of people, they sell out down here. And they never experience this. So we need to start paying attention to the market direction. Don't buy when it's falling. All right, we just looked at the five big mistakes. Let me ask you a question. I want you to, after this, pause the video for a second and answer this. How could eliminating these mistakes impact you? Just take a second, just write down, maybe identify the ones that you've been making and answer, how could eliminating these mistakes really impact you? Great. Now knowing about those mistakes, we need to know how we fix it. So we talked a little bit about how, fix, about how to fix these things as we went through them.
But let's just take a look at the five step process that we teach all of you, all of our clients, on what you should be doing. So let me just get my pen out here. Let me just draw this out. Now I'm actually not gonna draw out the whole thing. There's five steps and this is what we teach our clients every week on our coaching calls. And we focus on, in those coaching calls, primarily the middle three. All right, so I'll kind of leave number one and number five as a little surprise for you so you can go check out the course. But in our Successful Investing Quick Start course, there's five steps. We focus on these middle three primarily in our weekly sessions because this is where people are strugg struggling with the most. So number two is all about knowing your exits. All right, so you gotta know when you're gonna exit. So what we focus on, just like we were talking about as we were getting, went through the mistakes, is you gotta know what you're gonna do if the stock goes up and what you're gonna do if the stock goes down. So this is setting your stop and this is thinking about your profit target. All right, so when we set our stop, we're always thinking about our 1% maximum risk, which we talk about in detail in the Quick Start course. I won't go into great detail here, but you gotta know your exits. All right, and then number three, once you know when you're gonna exit a position, you gotta know if it's okay to be buying. Because remember, you don't wanna be ignoring the market's direction. So you gotta have that buying signal. Don't just go out there buying stocks in any old day. So you're gonna have your buying signal. And what we preach is to look for things like a green light. So I'll put a GLB here. I call it green light buying. So we're gonna wait for Vectorus to give us advice that it's okay to be buying stocks. Then once we have the signal that's okay to be buying, we're gonna look for, I'm gonna say find, I'm gonna put GS for good stocks. And what do, you, what do I mean by good stocks? Well, if I were to draw out a graph, this is what you're gonna be looking for. Price to be going in a 45 degree line like this. We're gonna be looking for earnings to also be climbing like this. The third trifecta here, which is value to be up here above the price, All right? So these would be primarily on two separate axes or scales. So we're gonna be looking for stocks that do that. We teach you how to do that in the course. So that's the fix. By doing these three things, you're gonna really eliminate those mistakes that we talked about today. All right, so what area do you need to work on first? So if you're looking at those three specifically, setting your exits, using a buying signal, and only buying when the market's going up, and actually buying good stocks, not buying that stuff that's going down, if you looked at those three things, what area do you need to work on first? Identify that now. Great. So let's talk about action items. What should you be doing right now after you end this video? What's the immediate things you should be doing? Well, the first thing I'd recommend is if you have not watched the Successful Investing Quick Start course, do this. So if you're a Vectorvest member, just open up your Vectorvest product, click over to the training tab, and it's right there for you. It's called the Successful Investing Quick Start course. That's step number one. Step number two is we send you an email over the weekend to register for our coaching class, which here in the U.S. we run every Thursday. We actually invite U.S. and Canadians to that. And we also have other coaching sessions across the globe. Make sure you attend those. We'll keep you focused. Now, if you're not a Vectorvest member, this is what you should do right now. If you happen to be watching this video and you're not a Vectorvest member and you want to join, go to Vectorvest.com slash trial. Get your five-week trial for $9.95. You'll be included in five weeks worth of coaching. You'll get the course and everything. We'll make sure that you're on the right track. All right, folks, have a great evening. And I'll see you at the next coaching session. Take care, everybody.